Tonight on Newswatch, diplomatic deal. China set to grant a blind activist permission to leave the country. What it means for China's underground church. Plus, protecting traditional marriage. Reverend Billy Graham weighs in on gay marriage laws sweeping the nation. And governor recall. Hear from Wisconsin's Scott Walker about the possibility of getting kicked out of office. All this and more tonight on Newswatch. The U.S. and China make a deal to allow a human rights activist to leave China with his family. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lee Webb. It appears China now is going to allow Chen Guangcheng to come to the U.S. to study. This is the latest development, a dip diplomatic tug of war that's been going on for days. It's increasing tension between the two superpowers and shining a spotlight on human rights violations in China. Dale Hurd starts our coverage tonight. After days of isolation and moments of desperation, Chen Guangcheng appears to be coming to America. The prominent blind activist now says he's been offered a fellowship at New York University and wants to come to the United States to study. And the Chinese government says he will be allowed to apply to travel. Pro-Chen demonstrators protested at the White House today and five were arrested. Spokesman Patrick Mahoney blasted the Obama administration for not standing up for human rights and against the Chinese government more forcefully. This issue will not be resolved until Chen Guangchen and his family are on American soil. The United States was caught in the middle of a diplomatic crisis when Chen made a daring escape from house arrest and traveled to the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. When Chen agreed to leave the U.S. Embassy, Chen and U.S. officials did not know that his wife had apparently been beaten. The interrogator told her very, very clearly that uh, if your husband did not walk out of a U.S. Uh, embassy, we will kill you. The Obama administration has gotten a black eye while trying to balance its support for human rights with maintaining ties with communist China. Some Republicans believe the White House dropped the ball. If these reports are true, this is a dark day for freedom, and it's a day of shame for the Obama administration. Chen still hasn't been able to speak directly to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. But for the first time since arriving in China for an economic summit, Clinton addressed Chen's situation. He confirms that he and his family now want to go to the United States so he can pursue his studies. The U.S. says if and when Chen's visa application is processed in China, it will grant visas to him and his family. Dale Hurd, CBN News. And our senior reporter George Thomas joins me now for more on this story. George has traveled extensively to China over the years. George, is this a huge embarrassment for China? I don't believe I've ever heard them speak as sternly and as strongly towards the U.S. as I have in the last few days regarding this issue. Yeah, monumental embarrassment. You know, you have to understand the Chinese mindset. This is having traveled in China, being part of the Asian subcontinent myself. I understand the Chinese psyche. You don't embarrass them. This is a very face-losing opportunity, a moment for the Chinese. And you don't deal in a situation like this. Here, this man, okay, he comes out of house arrest, he escapes. And in essence, the New York Times is saying, it gives a detailed account of how uh, he was, in essence, smuggled into the Ch into the U.S. embassy because clearly a Chinese a, a gentleman cannot just walk up to the U.S. embassy and enter the embassy. They were helped. He was helped by the American officials and was was granted access into the embassy. But this is just not the way to deal with this. It's a it's an awful situation and a very very complicated mess. But. Clearly, this is a very embarrassing moment for the Chinese government, so much so that 150,000 people online went and responded to a, an article published by the government uh, newspaper there, uh, in essence calling Chen a tool for the U.S. government. Well, well, you say this was not the way to handle it. Yeah. How would you have liked to have seen it? Well, so much of this is, is, is behind, the, behind closed doors. We have secret negotiations. You talk about situations like, you know, people need to understand China has come a long way in the last 30 years. Look, you're dealing with 1.4 billion people, and there are obviously going to be grievances between, between citizens and local officials uh, across the country. Um, uh, and so to deal in such a public way is not the right way, put it in context within the Chinese culture. Quickly, how does this affect the underground church? Uh, my fear, that's my biggest fear. I've been talking to our folks in the newsroom. That's my biggest fear, uh, in, in not in the short term, but, but in the long term, uh, because uh, the 
group that's associated, in essence, helped Chen get out and create this sort of situation, is a Christian organization that helps the, uh, the, 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 the rights of Christians inside of the country. And my concern is that in the months ahead that you are going to see a crackdown on the, on the underground church because so many of the folks who were involved in, in helping Chen to get out of his home were part of the underground church. And so the Chinese government is going to look at this as, wow, you've got an underground church that's getting politically active uh, on such a major scale. Um, so my, my, I would look to the underground church in the next few months to see the kind of pressure that's put on on this uh, on this house church uh, movement. Well, it's an ongoing story, and George, we appreciate you keeping up uh, with it for us. You're welcome, sir. In other news, Christianity was born in the Middle East. Today, Christians are being driven out of that historic region, and they're facing persecution in other parts of the world as well. And some say the U.S. isn't doing enough to stop it. Chris Mitchell reports tonight from Jerusalem. Since 2003, attackers have bombed 70 churches in Iraq alone, and that's only the beginning. We're seeing a very uh, vicious uh, attack on Christians in a number of countries. Religious freedom activist Nina Shea says this affects the two largest Christian populations in the Middle East. About two-thirds of the Christians in Iraq have already left. In, in Egypt, we're just beginning to see uh, those with green cards, those with visas um, are fleeing. For years, Middle East Christians lived under the protection of longtime dictators. The so-called Arab Spring ended that with the overthrow of regimes like Egypt's Hosni Mubarak. The old uh, secular order, even though it was a dictatorship, military dictatorship at that, very oppressive for them, they nevertheless were able to have churches and to pray as Christians. Now they're concerned that they can no longer do that. In Saudi Arabia, most Christians are foreign workers. No churches are allowed, and Shea says the government is even hunting down people who pray in their homes. Shea says it's not just the Middle East. There is a radicalization of Islam going on throughout the world, and this is having an impact on the tolerance that there is for non-Muslims. Those countries include Nigeria, North Korea, China, Vietnam, and Pakistan. Yet this widespread persecution is largely ignored by the mainstream media. A rare exception is this Newsweek article by Ayan Hershey Ali, described as a Somali Dutch feminist, writer, and politician. She says the world often hears complaints about Muslims victimized by the West. But she writes, in fact, a wholly different kind of war is underway, an unrecognized battle costing thousands of lives. Christians are being killed in the Islamic world because of their religion. It is a rising genocide that ought to provoke global alarm. Ali says the West needs to use financial and diplomatic pressure against offending countries. Shea specifically points to the U.S. as not doing enough, especially in Egypt. We can use quiet diplomacy. We can use um, more public statements to signal that we uh, it matters to us, that we're not indifferent, that it's not a green light for them to continue killing Christians um, and, and disrespecting their, their, their worship. Um, so I, I think that there, we have a lot of levers to pull, and we just need to start doing it. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. The attorney for a jailed Iranian pastor is sentenced to nine years in prison. Mohammad Ali Dadka was representing Pastor Yusuf Nadarkani. Nadarkani has been sentenced to death for leaving Islam and converting to Christianity. The American Center for Law and Justice has been working to secure Yusuf's release. The ACLJ says the pastor is at greater risk now because he has no legal advocate. His attorney has been charged with acting against Iran's national security and spreading propaganda. Coming up, North Carolina voters head to the polls to define marriage. Reverend Billy Graham weighs in. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now for a new pain-free meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Areva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. 
With these new meters, there's no coding, you don't have to prick your fingers, and some of these meters even talk. Your blood glucose reading is 122. And if you call 1-800-284-9762, we will send you a free Betty Crocker Diabetes Cookbook filled with delicious recipes. Call Ariva today. You'd be glad you did. Believe it or not, this is a catheter. It's the new Speedy Cath Compact for women. Now available from Liberator Medical with full Medicare and private insurance reimbursement. Stay tuned for an exciting free offer. But first, meet Julie. You know when you leave the house and you say, okay, I have my phone, I have my keys, I have my wallet, I'm good to go. Now I always have to think of a catheter because I can't go without it. Speedy Cath came into my life and it is life-changing. They're tiny and thin and you can fit them in your back pocket. You can fit them anywhere you need them. This is a lipstick or lip gloss and this is the size of it. With this, you're only touching the outer plastic and you're never actually in contact with the catheter itself. You, don't, you just really have to give a sample. That's all it needs is one sample and everyone's going to want them. Now, here's that free offer I promised. Call Liberator Medical. Get your free Speedy Cath Compact sample six pack. Shipping is free. 1 800 595 1446. 1 800 595 1446. Hiring here in the U.S. slowed down sharply last month. Employers adding 115,000 jobs in April. That's far short of what economists, economists had expected. The news gives Republicans and presidential hopeful Mitt Romney another platform to speak out against President Obama's handling of the U.S. economy. Mark Martin reports. CBN News caught up with Congresswoman Michelle Bachman at the campaign event in Virginia, where she endorsed Mitt Romney for president. People that are going to hear this interview that might be a little skeptical about lending their support to Romney, what would you say to them? What I would say to them are two words, Barack Obama. I'm happy to get behind Mitt Romney's candidacy enthusiastically because, let's face it, if our country has a second term of Barack Obama, we could be looking at further economic devastation and we will not see the price of gasoline go down. Gasoline has gone up 110 percent under Barack Obama. That's unacceptable. The unemployment rate dropped to 8.1 percent, a three-year low. The White House says the slight drop shows the economy is making some headway toward recovery. However, economists say that's only because there were fewer people in the workforce. People simply stopped looking for work because the economy is that bad. President Obama has a different take. More than one million jobs in the last six months alone. There's still a lot of folks out of work which means that we've got to do more. Mitt Romney says it appears the economy is slowing down. The American people are wondering why this recovery isn't happening faster, why it's taken years and years uh, for the recovery to occur. Bachman believes Romney understands how to grow the economy, especially considering he's now on board with her push to scrap the president's health care plan. When Governor Romney started the race, he said that he was going to issue waivers to Obamacare. Today, he's behind full-scale repeal. It's time for the country to unite. Evangelicals, uh, Tea Partiers, conservatives, independents, disaffected Democrats, we have to come together. It's not about party, it's about the country. And I'm happy to stand for our country. Mark Martin, CBN News. A hearing has been set for five of the 9-11 attackers. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed will be arraigned Saturday along with four co-defendants at Guantanamo Bay. The men will be tried in front of a U.S. military tribunal. Relatives of 9-11 victims will gather at military bases to watch the arraignment on closed-circuit TV. North Carolina is the epicenter now of the gay marriage debate. Voters there will decide yes or no on a state marriage amendment Tuesday. And evangelist Billy Graham is speaking out on the issue. And traditional marriage supporters are launching efforts to repeal gay marriage in several other states. Heather Sells reports. It's rare for the Reverend Billy Graham to take on political issues, but he is speaking out on North Carolina's proposed marriage amendment, taking out full-page ads in 14 state newspapers this weekend. They read in part, at age 93, I never thought we would have to debate the definition of marriage. The Bible is clear. God's definition of marriage is between a man and a woman. Thank you for voting. 
Early voting has already begun. Amendment supporters are campaigning near voting sites. If you don't have a good family, you really have a rough life. And opponents of the amendment are out as well. We're passionate about civil rights, equal rights. The issue has led to heated reaction across the state. We have seen a, a, a significant increase this year in, in vandalism. Signs from both sides have been vandalized, but Baptist Press reports that roughly half of the yard signs supporting the marriage amendment have been stolen or damaged. People are frustrated, but still, you know, we have a right. North Carolina is one of two states that will vote on a marriage amendment this year. Minnesota votes in November. And already this year, two states have voted to legalize gay marriage, Washington and Maryland. There's now eight states plus Washington, D.C. that have legalized same-sex marriage and 30 states with amendments banning it. But repeal efforts are underway in both Washington and Maryland. Brian Brown with the National Organization for Marriage spoke to CBN News about the chances in Maryland. We know that uh, the African-American community has somewhere around 70 percent opposition to same-sex marriage means that uh, although Maryland is a very democratic state, uh, it, the voters in Maryland don't support same-sex marriage. What could change the law in Maryland and the rest of the country? A ruling by the Supreme Court. And many believe the current Prop 8 case will end up there. Heather Sells, CBN News. And up next, the battle for the Badger State. Why an election in Wisconsin will echo across the country. John Mapes is 42, mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month, 60, 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret, select quote. Select quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. Believe it or not, this is a catheter. It's the new Speedy Cath Compact for women. Now available from Liberator Medical with full Medicare and private insurance reimbursement. Stay tuned for an exciting free offer. But first, meet Julie. You know when you leave the house and you say, okay, I have my phone, I have my keys, I have my wallet, I'm good to go. Now I always have to think of a catheter because I can't go without it. Speedy Cath came into my life and it is life-changing. They're tiny and thin and you can fit them in your back pocket. You can fit them anywhere you need them. This is a lipstick or lip gloss and this is the size of it. With this you're only touching the outer plastic and you're never actually in contact with the catheter itself. You, don't, you just really have to give a sample. That's all it needs is one sample and everyone's gonna want them. Now here's that free offer I promised. Call Liberator Medical. Get your free Speedy Cath Compact sample six pack. Shipping is free. 1 800 595 1446. 1 800 595 1446. On June 5th, voters in Wisconsin will decide if Republican Governor Scott Walker should be recalled. The race is expected to be very close. David Brody explains why it's so important in tonight's Focus Report. Wisconsin is a state divided. As Shakespeare might say, to recall or not to recall, that is the question. And in the middle is this man, Scott Walker, hero or villain. Voters seem evenly split, and Walker is ready for the fight. I don't plan on losing. I'm going to run a campaign to win. I'm hoping I can get the truth out and ultimately convince enough voters in the state uh, to honor me with their vote again like they did in 2010 but I'm not afraid to lose. At issue is Walker's attempt to rein in spending and repair a $3.6 billion budget deficit. His bill passed, but it caused liberal protesters to storm the Capitol with frustration because it effectively took away the ability for most public unions to bargain collectively. And it forced state workers to contribute more to their pensions and health care costs. But Walker says an out of control budget requires tough choices and courage. What I have heard for years are voters saying to me, 
I get sick and tired of these people getting elected to office. And then when they get there, they don't have the courage, they don't have the guts to take on these tough issues. Mm -hmm. And I think people are hungry for leadership. Now, liberals are hungry to see him gone. They accuse him of union busting, being a bully, and forcing a deeply conservative agenda on a moderate state. Scott Walker's taken us way too far to the right. Graham Zielinski with the Wisconsin Democratic Party helped organize the recall. They needed 500,000 signatures. Well, they got double that, nearly one million. And that happened in 60 days, in the middle of the Christmas season, in the middle of uh, winter, in the middle of Packer season, where it's very difficult to, to do this stuff. And it was a t the greatest petition drive in American history, uh, precisely because people in Wisconsin uh, are uh, offended by this uh, my way or the highway approach that Scott Walker is using. When Scott Walker goes to work every day here at the state capitol in Madison, Wisconsin, there are others that go to work too, namely protesters, singing protesters. They've been out here every day for over a year. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. In liberal Madison, this solidarity sing-along is like being at a modern-day Woodstock. Pro-union forces crooning about sticking together and giving Walker the pink slip. There is frustration, there's anger, and there's confusion, and people on both sides, you know, are, are upset with the divide in our state. They say you need no union. Walker's opponents are not just singing, they're dropping boatloads of cash, especially big national unions. Walker estimates that when all is said and done, They'll spend about $60 million to try and defeat them. I think clearly they want to defeat me. They want to take me out on June 5th. I may be anti-big government union bosses because I think in the past, one of our problems has been is that they've been the ones calling the shots instead of the hardworking taxpayers of the state of Wisconsin. I put the power back in the hands of the taxpayers. Walker is also accumulating a significant war chest, and it's not just coming from voters in Wisconsin. People from all over the country are donating. This is shaping up as a major ideological battle. And I think it's a reflection that no matter what the level, that people understand what's at stake and they understand what's really our opposition. That's why the Tea Party is heavily involved in fighting the recall. Ross Brown, who is with a group known as We the People of the Republic, helped create a database that shows who signed the recall petition. Turns out that local TV news anchors and judges actually signed it. Brown's main goal was to make this a transparent process, but he also says the rap against Walker as a Tea Party type governor who doesn't care about people is all wrong. We're debating as a nation, what is the appropriate function of government? Um, you know, as a Tea Partier, I am, you know, I can be accused of many things, but believe it or not, I don't want to see people out dying in the streets. The topic of conversation now centers on jobs and whether Walker has actually been an effective governor. As you might imagine, in this divided state, both sides say they have the numbers on their side. Under Walker, the unemployment rate is down from a year ago, 6.8% this March compared to 7.6% last March. And in the first two months of this year, Wisconsin started gaining jobs, roughly 20,000. Walker had promised to create 250,000 jobs during his time as governor. There have been some locally here in the media who say, yeah, why don't you have 250,000 jobs? Well, it was 250,000 jobs by 2015. What we did was turn things around. 2008, 2009, 2010, we lost 150,000 private sector jobs. In 2011, we leveled that off and now, we're in a progressive uh, increase the, the last two months. However, in March, the job numbers took another dip. The state lost more than 4,000 private sector jobs, while most states were gaining, giving his critics more ammunition. Look, Scott Walker has done a really weird and neat trick, which we don't like, which is that he's managed to keep Wisconsin uh, losing or negative jobs while the rest of the nation has been, has been adding jobs. Voters will ultimately decide Walker's fate, and their calculation won't be just about job creation. It will boil down to whether they see him as a governor who had the courage to tackle tough budget issues and stand up to the unions, or as a hard-charging ideologue who overstepped his authority. I think it is one of those tipping points, not just here in Wisconsin, but in America, where we say, who's really in charge? Now, we want people who stand up with the hardworking taxpayers and make decisions at the local and the state level by people who are duly elected uh, by the citizens of that jurisdiction? Or do we want a handful of big government union bosses continue to call the shots? And that to me is really what it's about. But what if he's recalled? I think it sets aside any sort of courage in American politics 
for at least a decade, if not a generation. And that's why I say it all the time, that's why we can't fail. But you can be sure a lot of people are hoping he fails. Yet Walker stays steady. As a preacher's kid and with a deep belief in Jesus, he knows God's got it all under control no matter what happens. All this is just you know, a temporary thing and, and you know, God's got a plan for us that, that who knows where it might be even beyond just being serving as governor of the state. But if we stay true to that, there, there's always comfort and, and, and God's grace is abundant no matter what you do. David Brody, CBN News in Madison, Wisconsin. John Mapes is 42, mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month, 60, 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret, select quote. Select quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Do you have breathing problems like asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, or COPD? Then you may qualify for Medicare coverage of your respiratory medications. To see if you qualify, call Med4Home. Med4Home is a specialty pharmacy. They offer a wide variety of respiratory medications which may be covered under your Medicare Part B benefits. Let Med4Home's team of experts work for you. They'll work directly with your doctor. They'll deliver right to your home and call you monthly for refills and to see how you're doing. Best of all, they'll handle the Medicare paperwork for you. It's so easy. And if you have supplemental insurance, there may be little or no out-of-pocket expense. Let Med4Home's team of experts work for you. Call Med4Home now to see if you qualify. For more information, call 1-800-321-0089. That's 1-800-321-0089. Well, talk about being in the right place at the right time. Tyler Smith was fishing at this reservoir you're about to see. All of a sudden, a woman lost control of her car and drove right into the water on the other side. Immediately, though, Tyler jumped into his truck and raced to the scene and without hesitation, dove in. Then as it started going under, I yanked her halfway out, and then it just sucked her right back in as it was just sinking faster, and then she grabbed a hold of my legs, pulled me under. Give them all the credit in the world. I mean, it's just so nice that there's a lot of people out there willing to go that, that distance. Wow. So tonight we salute Tyler Smith, and we also salute another Tyler by the name of Tyler James. Uh, this is Tyler's last day here at CBN. He came to us five years ago as a videographer then came to us in CBN News uh, to work as a reporter and a producer, and we will miss him. He's taking a job uh, in another town in the uh, field of marketing, but uh, we will miss Tyler because he's done a great job producing this newscast. He's also a great guy. We wish him the best, and uh, also to his wife and soon-to-be-born uh, little baby girl. Tyler, we'll miss you. Good night.